The growing world's population with environmental degradation and climate change presents real challenges for the availability of land, fishery and forest resources. The governance, control, management and ownership rights of these natural resources therefore becomes very crucial to ensure food security, peace and stability. Land ownership and control systems in the fishery sector in Ghana, for example, has become a critical element in determining how people use and control fishes resources such as landing sites and fishing grounds. Say if you come back here, you hear you ma. No, be a bit sizzy. There, how many are made? And see, more here you ma no waha. So you tell me you want to catch a catch and then to cook lamb po album. But no, my here you can. So now you have much here. This hospitality group we encroaching on our beach, our landing beach. If you go to the beach now, you'll see some hotel coming up now. In response to the growing and widespread land tenure conflict, Food and Agriculture Organization FAO and its partners embarked on the development of guidelines on responsible tenure governance. This initiative, which supports the voluntary guidelines on the rights to food, was adopted by the Fari Bambo Partners to improve governance of fisheries resources such as fishing ground and landing sites. The VGGT are also intended to contribute to achieving sustainable livelihoods, social stability, housing security, rural development, environmental protection and sustainable social and economic development. You realize that when you go to most of the fishing communities, uh, they will tell you that their, their coastline used to be far ahead but due to the erosion it has eroded to some level point that the lands that they are working on or they are using as fish landing sites have, have an owner so in this case there is tenor rights somebody who legitimate rights to these uh, lands and if the person decides to use the land for any other purpose it means the livelihood of these fisher folks will be lost so on that basis it's why we came in for them to dialogue, to have a discussion, to build consensus on why they should secure those fish landing sites. This reduction in Ghana's total fish production compels government to spend large sums of foreign exchange to import frozen fish annually to supplement domestic production. This, however, is not sustainable and business as usual means empty nets for fishing communities and empty plates for consumers. I remember um, when the Farabambo came and the Nanan were aware that they wanted to secure the beach land for the fisher folks. We had a little bit of problem because, as I said, uh, they sold it. So Nanan put our, uh, our heads together with the chief fisherman. The Farabambo People also were there, and then they explained everything to win an anum that no, if you are to sell all that place, or we, uh, we are to give it out, eventually we we'll lose the whole place. As their project partners, that Oxfam, Care, and Friends of the Nation (FON) work together to ensure active involvement and participation of key community stakeholders in the sustainable management of fishes resources, they encountered many challenges. So one of the key challenges was, was, was a result of ownership, how to transfer ownership from the real owners to the fisher folks. Some of the challenges were the, the, the owners of the land coming up to say that, okay, this land is not for the community, it's, it's for my family, and for that matter, you cannot demarcate it unless we go through a negotiation processes. When this project, project was, wasn't there, things were done anyhow. When we get to the coast, there's no proper planning, leadership, very poor. They ask Paribampo trainers and train these communities. You can say that now they have leaders. I will say yes, things are better now. Government should be able to make um, flexible policies on communities that wants to document and secure their landing site and make sure that the district assembly is also active in these processes.
My name is Mrs. Gertrude Oforowa Fefwame. I work with Site Savers as a global advisor responsible for social inclusion. And I'm also Ghana's elect member of the Committee on the Experts of the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, CRPD. Inequality is a very critical issue for everybody. Inequality is a situation in society where some people, in most cases, very few people, have better access and opportunities to resources, power and influence than some people. For those who do not have these kinds of access, they find life very, very difficult to live by. And actually, inequality explains the missing link uh, within a situation where, whereas there is economic growth in a society, it's not everybody that uh, uh, benefits from this growth. The friend Benjamin Kwame Aji, my dear 25 years, the grand of our Muruka and Motor Release Park, the Ponsi Sotu, Semi Pon. Udabontinama My name is Charles Dradosi, a social policy specialist with UNICEF Ghana. We are talking about inequality. Inequality is one of the central reasons why the Sustainable Development Goals has been launched. And it talks about not leaving anyone behind. Why? Because right now, in all the growth, in all the developments across the world, where incomes are supposed to be growing, per capita and all that, a lot of children, a lot of women, a lot of citizens are being left out in terms of opportunities for health, education, basic housing. If you go to some of our communities now, especially even in Accra, and see kids lying on the street with no uh, accommodation, with no shelter, it's very worrying. And these are part of a Ghana which is middle income. And we think that that is not good enough a lot of people are not benefiting from that growth. And it is manifesting in both statistics and the reality of what you see on the ground. If you think about the inequality uh, ratio right now, it has grown up to 3.3% between 1992 and then 2013. And that means that in spite of all the good things that are going on in Ghana, the growth that we are experiencing a lot of people are being left behind, and that is not a good story to tell. If I cause no see, call if the call minimum eight months, we call hospital, ye bre, ye nyamoto, betambi ye nam, 
Moko, Tambi, a motor bear with fire waha. A Timia, your called Drupa Passing, Yenya, Yenya Koran, Na Yebre, and Sionu Susu, Na in Surumbe Yiri, Yambanmu and on Basku, the Abedus Yenya, Yebe Yam Kikri or Dodota Mali, Benantia Sana Ebeko, your Mianca Sami Honu Mau or in Tamienu, Bakunu Manconya, Akaka Kana Mikasa Mau. Inti bakun naka misem yo bre ya bre ye bre nu eh eko ruhanu ye nya hu ye ni hu se se anu ye ni mi kunu nu ye kunu nu ye ni oni ka be mai ne ko doctor inti ye bre mi nyim bu tu seven month ni mi nyim ko hospital e ti mi ko papa si e ti mi ko dai se ni ka u fa moto hai I do a papa sia in a house, get a gana. Yanny, one thing I can't hear. A be a bed from Mutuki of Besu, O Mam Bassan Eben Antis are con ye corner in Antiaqua, a cotimia. Ye be walk on us in ya. Be my womb premium at Tamimu, Bakuacam, and ye Yamia Duma, Nicasa Macom. Be Wahana, I want to come in. And now, in Antia Nantis are contributing a timimi. Namako nyamu to be a home ma family akon first day nu ma nya mi nu son na ma anya obo ye obediba priha akon ewa sika bebre nu antine yantime anko mi nyum busun seven months ni mi ntime nko ye bre sa ma mi nu o ye nche nu obuai sese anu on stimi nya hondi nu ntine ye su ye bre sa mi sori a hasisa I got drew a home eleven. We realize that the session and the greater session of society has much less disposable income, and a few have much more that allows them to access basic necessities of life. So, the same people who have a lot of a lot of disposable income um, are able to access health and better education services. Uh, much to the advantage of the majority of society who are unable to access such uh, basic you know, services. I'm Atukosi Kujiko, the headmaster of Dodo Betel DA Primary. And Dodo Amafu Secret, KJB District in Gota region. Some will come to school when we start by 8 to 9. They will come to school by 10 o'clock. Why? They don't have the means to come to school on time. All the time, when going to school, you see them with you see them going with quality bags. When they reach the river bank and there's nobody to cross them, they remove their uniforms, put them in the inside the, the, the rubber, the, the, the quality bag, and they tie it at the back and they cross. The guy can never do that. 
So that's what they do to go and they do to come. When it rains heavily, you will not at all cross. Even those on the river who help people to cross cannot at all help. Before we vacated, they were going to school. All along the way, when they were coming, you could see a palm tree farm. There was a very big snake. Uh, the name is uh, a python. The children have to run back to the community inform the people, the, 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 the community members. Really, when they went, it was a, the, a very big, the, the, the one who swallows human beings. The community went also, really, they saw it, and they killed, brought it. I've seen it well that if one, this road were to be constructed, and the bridge is being put over there, those walking to uh, Amman from for their uh, junior high, will be taking motors or taxis. It will, it, will, it will help. And those over there can also take motor that is a major to come to school. It will build up the community. The only problem that we have here is what? The road and the bridge. Corruption deepens inequality in so many ways. One of the ways is when the system takes advantage of the scarce resources for the nation. It makes it difficult to serve the interests of the poor and the marginalized. For instance, people in very marginalized areas do not have access to good roads, nor access to schools. We have children walking 16 miles just to go to school. At the same time, they even have to cross rivers which are dangerous to their lives because they want to get education. And that is a challenge and a problem that we need to tackle. We also see pregnant women being transported on very bad roads because some people have abused the resources that are supposed to be used to construct those roads. So fighting corruption should not be an issue for one person. It should be a collective effort because the when we fight corruption, we reduce inequality. We are able to mainstream all the marginalized people. And also when we fight corruption, we are fighting inequality because we are able to provide the needed resources and we, we reduce inequality and we make Ghana's development better. So it is important that all of us see this as a collective effort, that we need to come together and fight corruption because fighting corruption fights inequality. And for that matter, much more for persons with disabilities with a focus on women and girls with disabilities. The gap between the rich and the poor is widening and increasingly affecting persons with disabilities, education, employment, social protection, access to health, and participation in political issues and representation. And this cannot continue. In order to be able to bring up equality, this negative perceptions, the conception and misfortune around disability, the misunderstanding that it is a curse and a sin, the ignorance of the society that is slow to change, the discrimination and the stigma that is continuing need to be brought to an end. And also it is important that government would adopt the equity, employment, 
policy to influence the employment of persons with disability and to emphasize inclusiveness is the way to go to ensure that no one is left behind, persons with disabilities not left behind, girls and women not left behind. Otherwise, we as Ghana will never, will never achieve any of the SDGs, including Goal 10. Thank you very much. Real life jackets. No transport. Help us. This is inequality.